vindication. It felt so good. Um, not because I was speaking for the community, but that the community validated what it was that I was trying to do. And they recognized that I am really trying to put my best foot forward. And this isn't about ego, and this is not about anything other than trying to make a contribution. With respect to transgender theory, um, let's see how this works. The social constructivist, right, the problem, to make this simple, with social constructivism, in a sense, even for um, the transgender community, is that there is and still a preservation of essentialist notions. And the question is, what is still essentialized, right? The question becomes, what is still What is still essentialized? Right? If we can identify what's still essentialized within social constructivism, then we can find, if you think that essentialist notions are weak, we can find the quote-unquote weakness and try to modify that weakness. And the weakness that we found was that in this system, what was still preserved is the conception that there's a distinction and you only have two products. You can either be a man or you can be a woman. Right? You're either a man or you're a woman. That's still assumed. How you become identified as a man or woman has changed. Right? Here, you only have two options. You can either be a man or a woman, and there's only one way of becoming a man or a woman. Here, you still only, it's still only possible to either be a man or a woman, but now there's um, um, many different ways in which you can attain this identification. We have identified this assumption as a weakness. This assumption becomes a theoretical weakness because despite the fact the advantage that we gained is now that we recognize that um, this notion of gender becomes flexible because how we classify ourselves as men and women change over time. This is an example of Leave it to Beaver. However, there's still an assumption that there's only man or woman. Transsexual theory What's going to happen in transsexual theory is that we want to obliterate this, this assumption that there is only, um, this essentialist assumption that there's only identification socially as man or woman. And we want to say that you can be identified, right, so that we have sex, we have sex in transgender theory, we have gender, but we recognize that there's absolutely no association between sex and gender. There's no connection between sex and gender in transgender theory. So that you can be sex you can be sexed as male and you can identify yourself gender as a woman. And technically this is identified if you're sexed male and you're identified socially as gender, this is identified as a MTF. Right? MTF. This is male to female. Um, this is a male to female uh, transgender individual. If you are sexed female and you identify yourself as male, this is considered a female to male. Right? A female to male transgender. Both of these identifications, female to male or male to female, this is pre-operative, pre-op, right? So you can be a pre-op um, MTF, technical term, right? You can be a pre-op MTF, which means you're a pre-operative male to female. What does that mean? It means socially you're identified as a woman, but you still have a penis, right? So a pre-op MTF is a human being who still retains his sex, his penis, and his testicles, but he identifies himself socially as a woman. You can be a pre-op FTM, which you still have your labia, your vulva, you still have your vagina, you still have your uterus, and so on, but you identified yourself as, uh, um, uh, not male, sorry, as a man. Female to, oh, well, they call it man, but yeah, that's, that's what they call it, M-A, right? All right, now, important part to recognize is that all members within the transgender community aren't pre-op, there are post-op. So there is post-operative, meaning that you've had your sex changed, right? And this is what's known as sexual reassignment surgery. And I talk about this in the video. So sexual reassignment surgery, 
you are, properly speaking, a female or you're a male. Right? We know, sort of conceptually, this doesn't work theoretically, but conceptually, the female that's post-op, we should classify her as her. But if you recognize that she used to be a man, then you say, oh, well, she used to be a man. You know, she was really a man, but now she's a woman. Or, or you might say, in, incorrectly, that she's uh, male to female. You're really male to female pre-op. When you're post-op, you're just female. You're just a woman, actually. You're just a woman. Or you're a man, right? So, post-op, you're a woman. Properly speaking, you should just only be identified as a woman. Post-op, you're a man. You should only be identified as a man. But people sort of colloquially say, oh, well, you know, he used to be a she or she used to be a he. Technically speaking, post-op, you're just a woman, you're just a man. The problem, however, is that this attempt within the transsexual community, in the transgender community, conforms to the same assumptions, right? Because what, you're in, what you end up doing is you force yourself into a position to pass, what's known as pass. So that the post-op woman would have failed if she is identified as a man, right? If her surgery wasn't good, let's say she had a feminization sur surgery and her Adam's apple had been um, reduced. If her Adam's apple is bulging, if she has very large hands, then people are going to recognize that she's not, she's not really a woman. She must have been a man. So within the transgender community, there's a huge, huge um, attempt to pass. I want to be able to be socially identified as a woman. The argument is that this attempt to pass as a woman conforms to these essentialist notions. We can go back to a social constructivist notion or even an essentialist notion, biological essentialist notion, because I want to be, I want to seem as though I am a woman, I want to seem as though I am a man. So part of the transgender community conforms to these essentialist notions. However, not all of the transgender community is like this. There's a, there's a very, very sort of, very, very socially removed, I would even say subaltern, I would definitely say subaltern group within the transgender community, and they're known as radical transgenders. And I, I've seen, and I actually have to find the, uh, I have to find, see if I can find the article, because I don't have it in the citations. But I've, I have in my notes from a previous publication, I think, the full list of references, and I need to provide you guys with that. Because to my knowledge, there's only one or two articles that I've ever come across that speak about radical transgenderism. And what the radical transgender is, the radical transgender challenges the notion of um, um, binary gender essentialism. Because the radical transgender says, look, regular transgenders are sort of co-opting into the system by attempting to pass. So the radical transgender is identified as, let's say for example, um, a man. So he has a beard, he has short hair, he's muscular, he has a arm hair, you know, typical man, big Adam's apple. However, the radical, trans, uh, the, the radical transgender is dressed in all pink, a dress, it's not a cross-dresser, right? dressed in all pink, a dress, high heels, lipstick, and, and presents himself in this sort of contradictory fashion. This challenges our notion. It forces us to recognize. You want to say, and I, I hate to say this, but this is, what, this is the point. You want to be like, what is that? Who is she? Who is he? What is she? What is he? When you are at that level, right? Not that, oh, he used to be a man, or, oh, she used to be a woman. Or he used to, she used to be a man, he used to be a woman. When you're like, what is that? Right? What, what, what are they? Who, who are they? In almost this negative sense, you are actually destroying the binary division between man and woman because now we have other. And not other in the sort of alterity sense, right? Not other as far as this sort of decolonization, other, not other in that sense. You have something other than man and woman. To my knowledge, there's, there's the, the, the research on this level is almost non-existent, right? Um, and so for those of you who, graduate students especially, all my work is for graduate students, right? Um, for those of you that are interested in doing um, theory with respect to queer theory later, jump on board, right? Because this is, this is, this, you know, what, how do we make sense of that? Because the attempt